Welcome to Playboy Magazine, July 1968. We have a nice front cover here, uh, particularly like the aqua blue combination with the greens and the reds um, stands out a lot. We have, of course, the swinging theme here of this lady, and we have uh, the bunny shaped uh, with the ears for our continual theme of Playboy. Obviously, it's always hidden on the front cover, as you may well know from the 50s to the late 2000s, I think the uh, the, the Playboy theme was always hidden in there somewhere. We've got the Smanoff Blizzard. We have this camera here, which is the Mamiya, and it says no other camera has this switch, which allows you to set to switch between two separate exposure meter systems. It doesn't mean too much to me, but I'm sure it will to you if you are a photographer or something along those lines. Here's our contents for this month. The ones that stand out are Stan Dreyer with the fully, fully automated love life of Henry Keenridge. Um, got Gene Shepard with some humor. Got Thomas Mario, of course, back with some food. US Senator J. William Fulbright with a new order of priorities. And the other one was um, Len Dayton with a travel piece as well. And of course, Shel Silverstein uh, is among the hippies for this month. So we have here the triumph. And we've got Summer Whiskey, and this is Seagram's, of course. And then we've got some people writing in with some, looks like some tax issues. Um, there were a couple of letters that stand out for this month, which I will get to when I come to them. I'll try and remember where they are. Ashtran uh, Boots. And then we have Johnny Walker Red, the Pub Cologne. Um, what else do we have? So this is something a little bit different for this month. We've got Dark of the Sun. Um, so this is a film, first save the diamonds, then save the people. And I think this is about a band of uh, military people uh, going through the jungle trying to escape uh, with, uh, I think it's $20 million worth of diamonds here. Um, I've looked at the reviews for it and it actually has very good reviews. Um, so I haven't seen the film before, but something I will check out. Certainly if I can find it, might probably have to rent it. It's going to be a specialist thing, I think. So I might be able to get that through Amazon or something like that. But um, something a little bit different. We don't normally get many film adverts in, in Playboy. We've had a couple in the past, um, some Bond ones and that kind of thing. But um, And one very early one, which I can't remember the name of the film, but we have had some prior, but not many at all. Playboy After Hours, we've got Schlitz Beer. Yamaha, of course. Um, this one looks like guess this is a twin engine it's obviously it's got the two exhaust either side um you'll know more please let me know what kind of engine this is i'm interested i guess it's just a twin cylinder but i don't really know too much um got some books here so when ian fleming died his super agent james bond was riding the longest wave of success the book and movie industry had witnessed in many a year so there's a little feature here on that and then we've got jane b of course and cool filter cigarettes. Some more records for this month. Got the Fiat 850 Spider. Nice looking car. Very sleek, very simple advert. Um, some more stereo tapes. And then we've got you get three more claws with the new wide Tiger Paw Uniroyal tires. For men and women who are man enough to stick their necks out. So it's book subscriptions again. And some more records. Not too much new for this month. This particular issue is actually quite compact. There isn't a huge amount in this one that kind of stands out. There is a couple of nice pictorials which we'll get to. Um, but they're generally always good in Playboy anyway. But some of the articles are a, a little bit lacking I think at the moment. Um, heading into... Uh, the mid 1968 but i assume it gets a little bit better as we we head into the next year um so we've got J join playboy scene at lake G geneva uh, swinging shows year-round sports and then we've got the playboy forum this is an interesting letter that's come in here marital sodomy imprisonment and this is basically about a gentleman who is being prosecuted for having um, anal sex with his wife and apparently it was consensual at the time and then they separated and then it was raised and um, you know he was I think brought into court uh, or certainly trying to be prosecuted for it so you know you get these kind of letters coming in and it's um it's, it's interesting to see just the kind of things that are, are going on the, the kind of social things and you know you can be prosecuted for um 
sort of anal sex in in this era so it's um obviously we've had major law changes since all of this kind of thing uh happened but um it's interesting to read about and it says here as we go on to press we have learned that mr cotner's petition was granted in the united states court of appeals for the seventh circuit so nice little reads here all of these kind of things lots of uh articles on abortion and civil disobedience this is all the kind of thing and hugh hefner obviously funded a lot of um sort of programs for abortion he believed in the abortion rights so some more letters here certainly have a read through these uh, try not to skip through them have a little read through and i think in the next few issues i'm going to start reading through some of these as well just in case you can't be bothered or the text is a bit small to read or something like that i'll try and get through some of them for you We've got um this is vitalis with v7 and this one's grease fat oil and this one's no grease no fat no oil so i wonder what was in it uh, if it wasn't anything like that and then we've got some more letters paul newman uh, of course, a very famous actor, owned a racing team, racing team, he was a racing driver, actor. He won, I believe, an Academy Award or an Oscar for the Scorsese film, which I cannot remember the name of now, but uh, a very famous person uh, in Hollywood and in the motor racing world as well. So nice, uh, a nice feature. It's definitely a nice interview, actually. It's a good one to read through because he's also an actor, uh, sex star, as you can see here fledgling director anti-war activist so an all-round an all-round person um we've got Amer extra america's going dry and this is canada dry one of my favorites actually canada dry i have that of whiskey it's a very nice combination and we've got some uh playboy club hotels and then gordon's vodka too much else here at the moment we've got triumph gt6 and then we have caesar's palace in las vegas we've got playing fields by john cheever when a guy has to give up football he may turn to poetry or to widows who live alone and dye their hair red so not a great fictional piece to be honest for this month um, we'll just keep going through. So here we have uh, the model, uh, and her name is Kesia, I believe, uh, Kesia Nyman. And as you can see here, she's already got a comprehensive um, backlog of um, modeling pieces. And you'll remember this one here, this advert that we had with the tiger print. Uh, and this goes back quite a way, actually, I think to the late 50s, maybe early 60s that she featured in this one. Um, but yeah, of, of course, an attractive lady, and this is a nice nude pictorial with her as well. Uh, we've got no biz like quiz biz, so a little thing here. This feature regularly in Playboy little quizzes for the magazines. And here we have by Stan Dreyer. I think he was a kind of futurist and science fiction writer, as you can tell by the image here. He's, um, this is his a field of expertise the fully automated love life of kenry keenridge and then we've got buck brown one of his cartoons time for sport and this is of course all about watches uh, i don't know too much about them myself but feel free to give this a little pause if you want to have a read through ralph schoenstein uh, my country far right or wrong it's second constitutional convention time folks so listen in while intrepid gathering of star-spangled straight shooters puts an end to two centuries of communist conspiracy and this is humor of course by ralph schoenstein got seagull here and a pretty girl this is our playmate of the month uh so melody prentice So a nice set of photos here. And then I'll just show you the centerfold. Playboy's party jokes, more cartoons. And we've got Ollie Hopnoodle's Haven of Bliss. This is Humor by Gene Shepard. 
and star billing for a bit player. And this is food by Thomas Mario, given the leading role in a gustatory extrav extravaganza. The lowly lagoon will garner race reviews, rave reviews from your guests. They always get me uh, tongue tied, uh, some of these features. And here we have for a new order of priorities at home and abroad by US Senator J. William Fulbright, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and a powerful persistent critic of the administration's foreign policy presses for swift dramatic changes in our commitments before it's too late. So obviously we're coming out of the war era and uh, people were looking to change the country, our attitudes to war and many other things uh, that have come to light. So big changes in the 60s. And then we have Bright Tom White, Robert L. Green. So, of course, all about the white in the 60s and the 70s as well. I think that carried on. Must the TDM be the message? Article by Newton Minow. The former head of the Federal Communications Commission proposes a viable middle ground between commercial TV's mindless pap and educational TV's academic stuffiness. So, some sort of general politics as we see the expansion of TV and its broadcasting. Silverstein among the hippies. So if you know Shel Silverstein, you'll know uh, he travels around the world, documents it via drawings and writing, and he always does these little sketches. Here we have this one with legalized pot. Um, he doesn't seem to take any particularly political views as such. He seems to caricature people and sort of settings um, wherever he goes. So it's a nice feature. And then we have Damon Knight, and this is Masks. He was as close to immortality as science could bring him, yet anything that held the precious spark of life repelled him. And we have this very odd and kind of gruesome, almost hellish-looking red background uh, with this weird composition here. So it's a, an odd-looking story, not pleasant to the eye. Not a great read either, if I'm honest. Um, we've got It Happened in Monterey, and this is by Len Dayton. Travel, of course. And then we have Alberto Vargas here. And then we have the history of sex in cinema. Of course, this continues. Not one of my sort of favorite features. I've read the previous ones and as it goes along, it becomes a little bit tedious, but um, it was kind of interesting as and when this was kind of new, but it's kind of every month now. So it's a feature that perhaps needs to end, but it's been running for quite a while. So feel free to give this a pause and, and have a look through. But if you're into film and cinema and this particular era of censorship and uh, this sort of um, increasing nudity, then this is a, a nice piece for you to read through. So quite a substantial pictorial. And then we have My Country Continued here. Kodak's Instamatic. Yeah, so not one of the best issues. If you're a new viewer, please feel free to subscribe and like the video if you're enjoying it or have a look through some more before you like to make sure uh, you are actually liking for the right reasons. Um, I hope you do enjoy the series and please head back and have a look through some of the issues. We've got about 175 for you to go back through all very similar format. I haven't changed it up too much, but that will be changing at some point. As the magazines certainly get larger, I'm gonna to have to scale um, the um, length of the videos. They're gonna be a bit longer, and uh, I'm gonna to have to go more in depth on some of the features as well, because there's gonna be a lot more that people know about, a lot more uh, people who are still alive. Many of the people in these magazines have passed away. There's very few that are still alive today. Um, but as we get a bit closer to the bigger issues, I will try and pick out some more features and um, go through those. So there's not too much here. Feel free to give, like I say, these pages a pause if there's anything you want to read in particular. And then we've got Ericsson here. Just as we head to the finish, you'll probably agree it's not one of the greatest issues, but couple of nice features that stand out certainly the pictorials of Kesia and the playmate of the month was also nice as well okay 
back page, we've got Harley Davidson here. We'll have a quick look at what we've got for next month. We've got William Sloan Coffin, Gail's controversial, controversial anti-war chaplain, speaks out on the draft, civil disobedience and Negro militancy in an exclusive Playboy interview. We've got Wet and Wild, a steamy on the set pictorial of movie sex queen Carol Baker. Uh, that one's going to probably get quite a few views because I know Carol Baker was quite popular. Um, the Young Man Who Read Brilliant Books. This is by Stephen Dixon. Uh, the Guts Mutt Game, William Iverson, Dream Cars as well. So we're going to have a look at some of those. Eight-page pictorial. That should be quite good. Banking by the numbers, the inner workings of ALP High Finance, where the discreet Swiss give your account a digital disguise. Joseph Wexberg, new contributor here. Haven't seen him before. The Antine Bay Magenta, Ken W. Purdy. Len Dayton is exploring a new city. Uh, more Silverstein among the hippies, so a nice continuation from this issue. The Trouble with Machines, sci-fi humour in which a gizmo called Maximo proves to be the ultimate penultimate weapon by Ron Goulart. Again, another contributor. And Deep Thinkers, man's first conversation with non-humans may well take place not with extraterrestrials but with brainy dolphins. Frederick C. Appel, and again, a uh, new contributor. So we're all done for this month. I'll see you very soon. Uh, enjoy the start of your week, and uh, I'll try and get two new issues out for you this month. Again, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It does help the channel. It gives me an idea of how many people are interested in seeing Playboy content. So I'll see you all very, very soon.